still in your teens and you want to get rich? Well, actually, I should say financially free in the future. Well, if you're interested, be sure to check out today's video because I will be showing you four tips on how you can start your financially free journey here in your teens already. Okay, let's get into it. Hey, what's up you guys? Lucas here from ExcelWealth.com. Great that you joined in today because in today's video, I'll be going through the four tips that you should absolutely apply when you're in your teens and you want to be financially free in the near future. But before we go into the video, of course, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that so because that's the way how we can grow our community. And of course, if you haven't checked out my latest book yet, be sure to get your own copy on Amazon because it's out there. You can get your own physical copy just like these other people who've gotten their own copy already. Okay, let's get into the video. Advice number one. And as you can see on the board, it's get a job. Now you might be thinking, dude, we're talking about millionaire advice to make you grow over time. And the first advice that you give me, Lucas, is what the hell, get a job? Really? Well, I'll tell you this. It's not about getting a job so that you can make a little bit of money. Yes, making money while having a job is great. But I'll tell you this, when you're still in your teens, when you're like still super young, I'll tell you this, getting experience is far more interesting, is far more important. Now, I could tell you about all the things that you should actually go through. I could tell you about all the experiences that I have as an investor. But I'll tell you this, to you, that's just a story. To you, it's like, okay, it's another person telling me how things actually work. But I'll tell you this, School year has started again. There's a reason why so many teens have reached out to me. So yes, I am a university professor, and yes, I've seen a lot of teens saying like, hey mister, I see that you're doing great job on the internet. What can I do to get started as well, to become financially free and blah, 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 blah. The first thing is I can tell you all about it, but to you, it'll be always just a story that a other person tells. Well, this is why get a job. Now get the job, not because of the money, but get the job because you want to have certain experiences. I always say the best job is the free jobs. If you're doing a free job, yes, you're not getting paid for it, but I'll tell you this, you're getting experiences that other people don't get in your age. Well, because if you're in a supermarket filling the stocks, good for you, you're maybe getting paid a couple of bucks an hour. But I'll tell you this, the experience you get while filling stocks, yeah, it might not be very satisfying and you might be thinking, yeah, it's easy money. But then again, if you do you really need the money right now? Because if you don't need the money, why don't take on jobs? For example, within real estate that I'm doing, I have an assistant and the guy is maybe only 18 years old, but he's doing a lot of work that I'm just telling him to do. And like, okay, and he's always eager to learn. He's getting a job from me to get experiences. I'm telling him what I'm doing. I would be looking for these kinds of jobs when I would be in my teens. And I actually did, but <laughs> that's a different story. But for now, for you, your job is to get experience. Experience that you'll be using and applying in a later part of your life, which is so valuable. This experience, well, you can get started in your 20s, of course, absolutely. But you've got the time right now as well. And what is a better way to find people where you can get experience and sometimes get paid as well at the same time? So yes, getting a job, finding that job that will pay you in experience and at the same time some money as well, that would be nice. Yes, it would be nice, I'll tell you that. But then again, the most important thing in this whole advice that I'm giving you in getting a job is that experience that other people will not get when they're just filling a stock or doing a paper round. It's nice, but hey, it's just easy money and it doesn't teach you anything about the things that you're really working towards to. If you really want to build your real estate portfolio, filling in stocks and doing a paper round is not going to get you there. But learning from a real estate investor absolutely will. And if they're not willing to take you on, even if you're doing it for free, I get that because hey, I've gone through the experience of having heard, no, I don't want you, or no, I don't have any time to teach you, or no, why should I teach you, or no, why should I take you on? Because yeah, you're here to benefit from me. And yes, 
That's something that you have to go through. That's all experience that you'll never learn if you just go to a supermarket and say, hey, you know what? I want to fill up some stocks for you. And they'll just say, yeah, we need some extra hand. So in the end, find the job that will get you the experience and grow your knowledge on where you want to be in the future. That is so important. Okay, let's go to number two. Now, number two in this list, if you want to be financially free in the future, and you're still in your teens, of course, is preparing your mindset. Now, preparing your mindset, what do I mean with preparing your mindset? It's, of course, not saying like, you got to sit there and do your meditation. It's not about doing meditations. Now, I'm not saying that meditations is bad because I do that myself as well. But the thing is, it's not that just sitting there and thinking, I got to prepare. My mindset is going to help the whole case. Because the whole idea of preparing your mindset is, for example, reading. Now, you might be thinking, reading. Really, Lucas, the first thing is just tell me to find a job and the second thing is to tell me to read some books. Well, yes, the books that will help you educate you financially, the things that you're not being taught in schools. Now, not everybody goes to my classes in the university. So I'm not able to teach everybody about these financial educations. I cannot. My job is to help you while you're here sitting and watching this video saying like, okay, you got to prepare your mindset. It's very important to prepare your mindset for the great things to come in the future. Because if you haven't prepared your mindset, you can get started on a job. But, you know, your mind is like, yeah, I think it's a better idea to just fill up stocks in a supermarket because then I'll get money right away. If you're still struggling in your own mindset about what should I pick? You know, which, which choice should I make? If you're still struggling with your own mindset, dude, that's the first thing that you should overcome right now. So my advice is, of course, prepare your mindset. And the easiest way is to read some books. Now, the books that I would advise you to read, one of the books that I would advise you to read is The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. That's actually the mentor from Warren Buffett. It's a great book that tells you about, you know, how the market actually goes up and down and yet you're being offered to buy or sell your stocks. It's a great book to check out how investing works, not only about investing, but also about business. And if that's the direction that you want to go into, hey, absolutely check out that book. And next book, of course, that I would absolutely advise is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Again, a great book and yet again a book that is like 100 years old. But hey, the principles in the book really apply for the world today. So yes, you can find great reviews that will help you apply the methods into today's world. So yes, those are the two books that I would absolutely advise. And if you think, I actually finished those books already, well, then why not check out Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. I'll tell you this, it's all about hey, in which quarter are we in? Because, you know, that makes us think in a certain way, like it's absolutely preparing our mindset. Now, if you're still like interested, there are multiple books that I've actually checked out and read and think, wow, those are great. But then I'll just, you know what? I'll just list them down below in the description so you can actually check them out in a later moment. Okay, let's go to number three. Advice number three. If you want, of course, to be financially free as soon as you can, while you're still in your teens, is of course, live below your means. It's so important that you think about this because, you know, in the end, the moment you start making some money from your job because of your mindset, well, what happens is you're going to start making some money. You're going to save up some money. You think, hmm, I'm not doing a bad thing. I might just get a new phone or I might just get a new game console or you know what? I'll just get that comic book because you know, that's what I kind of wanted to read every time. Well, I'll tell you this. If you can leave the stuff that you really don't need, it's a way to get started. Invest the money. You don't have to have all the things in your life. In the end, it'll just be junk that you don't really need, that you really thought that you need it, but in the end, you don't. If you can live below your means, if you don't need to buy those things that you really don't need, it's a lot easier to achieve financial freedom the moment you really do need the money. If you're still in your teens, if you're just starting in university or in college, most likely you can just do it with the things that you already have right now. To so live below your means, and see if it's possible to just, you know, stretch all the things that you already have. And all the money that you do make, have a certain plan for the money because that's 
step number four. And step number four, as you can see on this board, is learn financial habits. It's so important. The first financial habit that you really need to learn is smashing that like button if you haven't done that so. No, okay, okay, okay. It, 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 it's not one of the financial habits in this video, but yes, it would be nice if you could hit that like button, okay? <laughs> so the first financial habit that you need to learn is to pay yourself first. Every month, you gotta learn and teach yourself you know what? My time is also valued. Now, you might be thinking paying yourself first. Yes, paying yourself first. If you don't know about that, I have shot a video on that and you can click on the pop-up button over there to check that video out. Why paying yourself first is so important. But in this video, I'll just shortly go through that as well. Paying yourself first is just valuing your own time. You know, the moment you get a job and you get a pay at the end of the month, but the moment you get paid, also value your own time. And you might be thinking, I, I still don't really get it. You know, I'm only in my teens. Lucas, dude, what are you talking about? I get that. Now you gotta see it like this. The moment you work for your employer, you get paid at the end of the month. That is your employer valuing you your time. Now, when do you value and appreciate your own time? That's the moment when you teach yourself a financial habit. And that's the thing. You know what? You get the money. Let's just pretend it's 500 bucks that you get. Ooh, I got 500 bucks. Great. Yay. But the thing is, 500 bucks. Okay. You're going to pay for some expenses. For example, you're going to pay for your phone. You're going to pay for the game that you wanted to buy. So all the expenses all of a sudden, but you gotta start with one of the financial habits. And the first one is paying yourself first. And this could be just, you know, 50 bucks. This is appreciating you yourself. You're appreciating like, hey, Lucas, great job. I'll just pay you. And this is what you do. Your employer pays you for the appreciation of your time that you put in, but you didn't appreciate yourself yet. And this is why the first financial habit is paying yourself first. Okay, so the first one is paying yourself. After that, what you need to teach yourself as well is tracking your expenses. Okay, so you've got that 500 bucks per month from your employer. How do you spend it? Do you even know that? Do you even know how you spend your money monthly? And this is why teaching yourself to track your expenses is so important. Now, tracking your expenses, if you really want to know that, I've shot a different video on that. Be sure to click on the video in the pop-up button. Okay, now another thing is you got to prepare yourself, prepare your mindset. And this is also for the debt. Like there are two kinds of debt. The first debt is of course bad debt. So that, that just takes out money out of your pocket every month again. It doesn't grow in value over time. It doesn't. For example, if you plan to buy a car using money that you don't have, so you're going to loan money and all of a sudden you have money taken out of your pocket every month. Again, it's living below your means. So don't get that car if you can't pay for it. And if you can, well, you know, it's getting a car that you really can't pay for it. It's actually trying to live above your means. So yeah, don't get that car. So driving a car, you know, the crappy car that it's second hand, maybe you got to start learning to live below your means, but also do not go into the certain debts. That's what they call the consumer debt, you know, buying things that you really can't pay for it. You know what? I'll use my credit card. I'll just swipe, swipe and uh, I'll buy the things first. You'll go into debt that doesn't generate you any money. So try and stay out of the consumer debt. But on the other end, we've got good debt and you really got to learn yourself what is good and bad debt. Now, if you want to know more about that, of course, I have shot a different video on good and bad debt. And this is the third financial habit that you should absolutely start to learn and distinguish. If you don't know what the difference is between those two, yeah, you'll be saying like, you know what? I'm not going to go into debt at all. Well, the thing is, if you want to be financially free and you, and you want to accelerate this whole process, then yes, going into good debt, getting into debt to buy, for example, real estate. Absolutely. It's a great way to get started. Now, of course, the final financial habit that I want to share with you is, of course, start investing your money. And yes, you should absolutely do that. So the first step is paying yourself first. And the second step in that whole journey of while you're applying to financial habits is of course, investing the money. Now investing could be completely passively. You could absolutely do that when you're in your teens, you can just put in a thousand bucks in an S and P 500 funds. You can just leave it there. And 30 years later, when you're only in your forties still, your money has accumulated so many times because you know, it grows with 7% each year on average, and then you didn't do anything. And yes, so some years it might drop and some years it might grow with maybe 20%.
but on average it grows on seven percent and yes you can just leave your money in and just you know wait 30 years and just take it out that is the easiest way but if you don't start right now in your teens dude you gotta learn to invest if you don't think hey you know what this is a good financial habit you know, you'll never get your financial freedom and financial freedom of course in this, in this case is that you don't really have to work anymore for the money that already comes in every month and these are the four tips that i really wanted to share with you if you're in your teens now you might be thinking lucas why are you sharing these tips with us right now well like i said Hey, school has started again. People have started to reach out again saying like, hey, Lucas, what can I do? And most of those people are still in their teens. So your job, if you want to be financially free in the future or just freaking rich. Yes, then absolutely get started, get a job to get the experience. Absolutely. Prepare your mindset. Read those books. Of course, live below your means. Don't buy the stuff that you don't really need and get yourself some financial education on what you should do on the choices in your life financially. Okay, I thank you very much for watching today's video. If you liked the video, of course, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to be notified every time a new video comes out, be sure to hit that notification bell as well. I thank you very much. And hey, oh yeah, don't forget to get a copy of my book if you haven't done that. So, okay, see you next time. Happy investing. Bye-bye.